Welcome to V is for Victory, a podcast about how small businesses overcome big battles. I'm your host, Jill Miller of Vera Creative, a boutique marketing firm in the Chicagoland area where I'm also a part-time professor of an advertising course. Join me as I talk with entrepreneurs about the challenges they face as well as their strategies for success. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 38 of V is for Victory. This is the first episode of 2022, so I am excited to kick things off with a super special guest. Her name is Lydia Fish, and she is 17 years old, but she is doing something a little different than most 17-year-olds. I think most 17-year-olds are like getting their nails done and Snapchatting. Is that right, Lydia? Correct, right. yeah. <laughs> right. Are you a Snapchat gal? Do you, do you dabble in social media? Oh, no, I don't. I'm not a fan of social media. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Okay. So, so yeah, so I was right on there when I said that uh, you're doing something a little bit different. Um, so right now you, you're a CrossFitter and you've been doing that for how many years? Yeah. So I started my freshman year of high school. Um, and then once, um, schools got closed and everything, um, the gym was closed for a short period of time, so I stopped then. But then I started consistently going um, my sophomore year, so about two and a half years ago, three years ago. Yeah, so I've been doing that. So so relatively new. What was your background in sports? So tell me what your background in sports was prior to CrossFit and then the story of how you ended up trying CrossFit for the first time. Yeah, so basically when I, from a young age, I've always been active. Like my parents, um, big runners. My dad was a runner in college and my mom danced and, you know, she ran track as well. So I was in dance when I was really young until I was about five, I would say. And then from there I got into gymnastics. I really loved the flipping part of dance. (laughs) And so... I did gymnastics for a few years, but ran into many injuries once I got to the pretty tough levels when we were doing skills that were complicated. So um, after all my injuries, I was still in cross country at the time. Um, My dad really loves running, so he got me hooked on running. So I ran cross country and track, played some soccer, and my parents finally said, you know, you're not doing gymnastics anymore. I've gotten injured way too many times. <laughs> I suffered an, a pretty bad ankle injury. I broke it and tore some stuff. And then I, um, same with my knee and, you know, little things like broke a finger and, <laughs> but, you know. So then we decided, well, this probably isn't the sport for me. And then I ran a few more years, but my heart wasn't really in it. I didn't really care too much I was competitive but I mean it seemed boring to me all we did was <laughs> run and so then there was a race that our whole family does it was it's called the run for the lights and CrossFit was a sponsor for that and I ended up I don't know women winning for the women and um the prize bag was a little CrossFit bag and there was a certificate for three months free of CrossFit. So I was like, wow, this is cool. And so then I went down, tried CrossFit, and then I immediately loved it. So. Okay. So, okay, let's back up a little bit. What? Because I was a gymnast by way of dance as well. So we have yeah. run, only I definitely don't CrossFit and I can't run to save my life. But, but um, what, why does it, just curious, what skill did you mess up your ankle on? What were you doing? Yeah. So I was doing, I don't know if you know what a single rail is. It's just one yes. bar. Um, yes. We were warming up giants. You know, I was pretty familiar with the skill. And it was just a fluke thing. I went oh. to dismount and yes. um, the mat was shifted and I landed on the side. Oh, the crack. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. Just cracked. So yeah. it blew up right away and I knew <laughs> Something was right. That's the worst. Oh. Yeah. Um, what does being injured teach you? Like you've had yeah, a lot so of injuries, so you've had a lot of setbacks, but what, what good comes out of that? I think there was a lot of good that came out of injuries. I learned to be patient. Um, it's really hard not to rush things. And when I was in physical therapy, I was just like, well, can I do this? Can I do that? And she was like, no, just like 
calm down. <laughs> you have a long time and you're going to take baby steps before you can get back to where you started. But then, you know, it ended up helping me in the long run, um, not jumping into things too early. And it really taught me um, there's more to life than just sports when you're 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting because I think that, you know, it's like me, I – I like lived the sport. I go to practice and mm-hmm. then come home and practice. And I watched every competition and recorded every competition and memorized the commentary in every competition because I would watch it so many times. And it was just, it was my whole life. But you yeah. rarely see, um, I, I felt like it was like all my friends had that same kind of like right. mentality. But I feel like I don't know. I feel like generationally we are losing some of that. I don't think that there's a lot of for their sports anymore. And I can totally be wrong. Um, And hopefully you bring in some people that will listen to this podcast and be like, Jill, you're totally wrong. Um, (laughs) Because, because you'll speak to a demographic that's a little bit different, but, but yeah, you're right. You can get very, you know what, at 13, you can get very swept up in anything. Right. right. Like not just sports and, mm-hmm. and 17 and 27 and 47 and, you know, <laughs> right? Whatever so it's age, like, you yeah, know. we're, we're never too old to uh, get hooked on something, I guess. Yeah. So you, you win three months free of CrossFit from run for the lights. Mm-hmm. You go into your very first, like first time you step into the gym. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So I first went to the gym and it was during the open. I had no clue, you know, what, this open was or what they were doing but I remember we had to do overhead squats and burpees and pull-ups something (laughs) like that I don't know but I just remember I could not get on and off the toilet because my legs were so sore (laughs) but I just loved that feeling (laughs) sore and I just kept going back and that is so funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you've been doing it for a little over two years then, right? You're entering your third year. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so what – so you do the – so you did the open – you did an open workout. That was my right. I didn't first know what workout. Was. I didn't yeah. get judged or anything. Right, right. But that was one of your first workouts. So it was mm-hmm. probably a little harder than your typical <laughs> wad, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and so then you're hooked. And, and tell me about like where you, you are at with things right now, because there's, well, there's some pretty remarkable things that we have to mention that I don't think you think twice of, but I know your coach Al um, has talked about you a lot and she speaks very highly of you and has talked about how, you know, you've really earned respect from your peers, both the adults and um, the younger kids that come to CrossFit. And part of the reason for that just you know not only your work ethic but like she's talked about how you at 17 pay for your own gym membership Mm -hmm. and you pay for your own groceries and you do all your own cooking and you're you're responsible and so talk to me a little bit about is that out of out of necessary like your parents won't pay for those things or is it because you want to be independent yeah so um from the age of 13 my parents, my dad's an accountant, so they're very um, fond of being independent and being able to support yourself. So we watched these Dave Ramsey videos, and uh. my dad printed out um, all these papers and put them in a binder and said, okay, so every night we're going to watch one episode, and you're taking notes, filling out these worksheets, and then on your 13th birthday, we'll go to the bank and open a checking account for you. So then every month we do a budget. This is part of the course that we learned. And so since I was 13, I've been presenting a budget to my parents every month. And they give me an allowance, which I earn through doing um, certain chores that they assign. Um, so then they, whenever I would like something that they do not buy, like clothes or shoes or you know, special food, they're like, well, we give you allowance. So that's what your money can go towards. And now that I'm older, I've um, really loved working. You know, I just like to be on the go. And so <laughs> I picked up many jobs and I, it's more easy to support myself um, now that I have a larger income. And so my parents 
obviously know that and they say, well, if you want all this special food or you want um, it cooked a certain way or whatever, you're going to do it yourself because, you know, coming from a big family, it's just not possible to tend to one person's needs. So I think <laughs> something on both ends, like I want it and they want it. So. So was it watching the Dave Ramsey videos? Were you like rolling your eyes mm-hmm. and stomping your feet or did you? interested in the principles and the methodology and and like his approach to to finance yeah so when I when we started watching it I was like wow like this does it seemed out of reach you know I was only 13 and I was thinking about buying a house with cash and paying for college with cash and a car and I was like that doesn't matter but then you know after breaking it down it just it seemed a lot more attainable so then it kind of motivated me to, you know, put a name to every dollar and know what it's going to be spent on or where it's going. So, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. That's a, that's really just a unique story. And I, um, yeah, I don't think a lot of parents are doing that with their children. Mm-hmm. But what a great lesson to learn because, yeah, very yeah, yeah you know. Talk to me about all these jobs you have. You said you really like to stay busy and you have several jobs. What are they? Mm -hmm. So my first job, I started babysitting from the age of 10, maybe younger. I don't know. I have, I'm one of five. So I have a lot of siblings and I always helped out watching them when my parents were gone and then neighbors down the streets and cousins, I would always watch them. And I was like, well, I want like a real job, you know? So I went down, um, there's an ice cream shop downtown Chippewa Falls where I live. Um, it's called Olson's Ice Cream. And my older brother actually worked there before I did. And so I was like, well, they know my brother. So hopefully they'll think I'll be a good fit. <laughs> so I applied and I never heard anything. And so then I just called and said, hey, I'm just curious on where the application status is at. And then um, – they called me back and they were like, when can you start working? So <laughs> I started working there when I, um, before, I think a little before I turned 15. So for a while I've been at Olson's and then a new restaurant opened up at, on the lake, uh, out mm-hmm. at Lake Minnesota. It's called High Shores. It's a supper club. And so I'm hosting there right now. And there's um, the same owners have a chop house downtown Chippewa Falls. So I am working there too. And I nannied for several families over the summer. And I'm helping out with CrossFit right now too. So that's just incredible. Plus you're in high school. Plus oh, you're yeah. training twice a day, right? Yeah. You train in the morning and you train at night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which, couple, oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. I try to, I mean, some days um, it's a little more crammed, but I get everything done. <laughs> Okay, let's wrap up the family side. You're one of five. Where are you in that line of five? So I'm second oldest. I got to set a good example. Okay, and you have a, your brother is older than, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then who's below you? Then I have two more younger brothers, and then the baby's a girl. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. From a big family, it's loud in your house. Never a dull moment, yeah. right? Yeah, that's how it always is. I really do enjoy it. I think... Life would be a lot more boring if there was only a few of us. So yeah, and you have like I you on right like there's mm-hmm. this, like biggest your biggest cheer section has got to oh, be your yeah. family yeah. And they're always like, oh, let's have let's see if you can do more push ups or hold handstand laundry. It's always a competition. <laughs> on better more. So you come from a long line of competitive oh, yeah. people, individuals, your family. Yeah. They kind of rubbed that your parents rubbed off on all. The- <laughs> I would yeah. imagine you can do the most push-ups and hold the handstand the longest. I hope you can. <laughs> yeah, the handstand by far. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so talk to me then a little bit about your training and how is that going and what competitions have you entered and how is it going? Yeah, so I haven't done many competitions. Um, There haven't really been that many available. My first one was, well, the first in-person competition I did was a partner one, and I did it with a girl down at our gym. She's just a tank, but um, we ended up taking first at that competition, and I really enjoyed it, and I thought, well, I want to try 
um, individuals. So then I did a game day competition, which was in November. Um, I ended up taking second at that one. And then now um, I thought, well, I'll just try the Wadapalooza qualifier, see how I place. And I ended up qualifying. So that's really exciting. So I'll be doing that next week. And so for those of, you know, for people who aren't listening, first of all, to win your first ever competition is kind of insane. Was that, was that an outcome you expected going into Um, it? No, not really. We weren't too sure on how we were going to do because there were some heavy lifting events, but yeah, we ended up being a pretty strong team. Yeah. (laughs) And you were with Becky Nettie. We can just say it because (laughs) I imagine a lot of the CrossFit family is going (laughs) to listen to this. So shout out, shout out to Becky. Shout out to your coach, Allison. Um, (laughs) Your second competition, then you enter it alone. What, what were your expectations going into that one? Did you think you would finish as high as you did or? No, I had, um, very low expectations. Um, It's hard with social media nowadays where you just look up people and it's looks are deceiving to say the least. Um, (laughs) You're like, oh my goodness, this girl looks like she's really good. And then you get there, you do the first event and you're like, oh, they're not, I mean, they're good, but I guess I'm up there too. So um, that competition, I knew the events were not, a, a lot of them were not in my favor. So I just wanted to um, set goals for each workout, like do these unbroken or, um, you know, this time. So those were kind of my expectations at my first individual competition. And so for people who don't know what Wadapalooza is, what's the big deal about this particular competition? Why is it, why is it so exciting? Mm -hmm. So it's down in Miami in Florida, and it's really exciting because a lot of the games athletes, they participate in this competition. So there's a much larger field of competitive athletes. Um, It's also just exciting. It's on the beach. You know, there's swimming events and a lot of vendors there. So it's going to be a fun time. Yeah. And so this will be the first time you've traveled far for a competition? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like a strategy or a game plan of how you're going to imagine, like, you know, I imagine traveling, it, it tires out your body. Like it's exhausting, Mm -hmm. right? It's not comfortable. It's a long day. Like, so do you have a strategy on how to manage, um, just the travel aspect of going into a competition? Yeah. Um, my strategy is just going to be, um, to stay calm and not think about it too much. And then getting off the plane, you know, making sure I move, not get too tight, stretch out a bunch, um, make sure I'm drinking enough water because it's pretty hot down there. Um, Other than that, I'm just going to try to, um, you know, be confident in my abilities and know that I've trained hard and done everything to prepare. Um, So not being disappointed at all based on how I do. Now, real talk or are you going to be disappointed if they're if you (laughs) you don't perform to a certain level or finish at a certain place (laughs) um i think just since i'm so competitive yes part of me is gonna be disappointed that i can't obviously win everything um so that's just you know there's a little bit of me that would be disappointed but i know that this is just a learning experience like just soak it up in the moment and see how much I can learn and take in. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. What talk to me about a time where like you've handled disappointment, like obviously, you know, like you said, you can't win them all or maybe you can, who knows? (laughs) So far you've done, you've gotten pretty close to doing that. But, um, but what do you, what do you, how do you handle disappointment and how do you keep it from um, defeating you? Like say there's an event that you're really good at and mm-hmm. you actually mess it up and you know, that's kind of like your thing. Like you've got to be good at the good events, right? You got to maximize those. Yeah. Points, <laughs> right. So well, that yeah, if I didn't do well, <laughs> I think just going into it and not letting my nerves take over, um, just staying calm. And I mean, in gymnastics, it happened quite a few times, you know, 
I was better at an event than another girl, but she beat me. So I just kind of use that as like fuel, like, hey, I'm the next workout. I'm going to be so much more fired up to, you know, try to beat you or whatever. So um, not using um, disappointment as a um, to be negative, but using it just to do better next time. Well, in gymnastics, it's hard because it's subjective. You know, it's like it's somebody's opinion, right? And, you know, judges looking down and the girl bobbled on beam. You're like, did you see that? <laughs> you know? You're like, you're looking down. She bobbled. <laughs> or, you know, something silly like that. So so that's hard. CrossFit really is, isn't like that, the judging? Um, it's pretty cut and dry? Or Yeah. I mean, the standards are cut and dry. It's you know, you're either at parallel below or it was a no rep, it's a rep, you know. Um, but sometimes judges do make mistakes. Obviously, everyone makes mistakes. So some of it, like at my last competition that I did, I was counting my reps and they said I was done, but I I knew I, you know, had one more to do. But then the next event, they missed a rep. So it kind of, sometimes the judging is not perfect, but they're volunteering their time, so... You can't, you gotta give them some grace. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you need some grace too. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's always a good thing to remember. How do you, how do you handle nerves? Gymnastics is an extremely mm-hmm. nerve wracking sport. You're out there all alone. You know, a lot of times the spotlight is, is directly on you because there's maybe one other event going on. I mean, it depends on the size of the meat, but um, it can feel like you're out there all alone. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're one little body on a 40 by 40 or, you know, <laughs> something like that. But how do you, nerves like how did you handle in in gymnastics and does that carry over into CrossFit yeah I think a lot of it does visualizing really helps me I found that just you know walking myself through like my routine in gymnastics or now like the workout is really helpful knowing what movements come next or what you're going to focus on Um, that helps a lot to just control yourself and you know like most of the movements you do on a weekly basis and they're not going to be um, out of reach. So um, that will help a lot just to stay calm and know, like, you know, I train for this. I, I'm prepared. Um, another thing is just um, knowing that people are there to support me. It kind of calms me down. <laughs> like I'm not alone, you know, mm-hmm. for me. sure. Yeah. And so you have your coach traveling down with you. Mm-hmm. And is anybody from your family going to get to go? Yeah. So since I'm under 18, my a parent or guardian needs to be there. So both of my parents are coming down. And then my older brother. So he'll be like the jokester. So that'll be relieving. <laughs> so he kind of keeps you like loose and relaxed yeah. and puts a smile on your face and, right. and things lighthearted. That's mm-hmm. good. That's a that's a good person to have in your corner for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so visualizing how much then for you is a mental game. How much of CrossFit is mental? Like for me, gymnastics was all mental. I had the skill. I did not have the mental chops for the sport. And I was constantly focusing on everything else and what they were doing. And it kind of mm-hmm. sounds like you might be a little bit like that. I've heard you say a couple times like, oh, I look at social media or, oh, I, mm-hmm. I see this and so my coach came up with this strategy that was called FODGE, and it, st- it stood for focus on Jill, like focus oh, on what Jill is doing. Yes, focus on what Jill can do and don't worry about other people. Mm-hmm. So for you, how much of CrossFit is of the men- a mental game? Um, I would say I'm pretty good at just shutting my brain off and just going, but um it's much harder if you're looking around and you know not focusing on yourself then it's easy to be like oh well they're probably going to do better they can lift more you know stuff like that Mm -hmm. Um, in gymnastics I never really had an issue mentally like for skills like never had mental blocks or anything Mm -hmm. like that um it's just comparison I think a lot of females can um relate to you know comparing yourself to other people or looks you know so I've been really working on that and now I'm just I'm confident in myself and I don't really care what other people (laughs) think too much 
is that something you've had to work on kind of alone and come to a realization that you had to, that you're comparing yourself? Was it like an aha moment that you had or did someone that to you like, Hey, Lid, you know, why are you comparing yourself? Uh, you know, you need to work on that. Or was it something you had some help with or how did that, how did that come about? No, I'm actually really thankful. My parents, um, do not allow social media or until we turn a certain age usually. So I actually just recently got Instagram. And so they're very adamant on you're not comparing yourself to other people's lives because what people post is not how they're actually living. Um, So that has really helped me. And now, um, now that I do have social media, I'm a lot more conscious of, hey, like, this is just a picture. It's not how they really live. Um, so no one has really like um, said I've been comparing myself too much or anything, but my mom has always been very aware that women tend to compare themselves. So she's tried to save me. She tries to save me from that a lot of times. That's great. Great. So, okay, you're going to Wadapalooza. It starts on the 13th, right? January 13th? Yep. And it's how I many days? Friday. So the elites compete um, Thursday. So I'll have three days of competition. Wow. And then, will that be your longest competition? Yeah. Three days? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Best case scenario, what happens? Best case scenario. So some of the events have already been released. I know three of them. Um, the first one that was released is a strength-based workout. So that one, um, my goal is to do my best, not fail any reps, and um, just have smooth lifts. And there's another event, which is a bunch of box jumps, kettlebell, um, box step overs, rope climbs, burpee box jumps, and kettlebell deadlifts. So I'm pretty um, confident with that event as well. Um, just pacing it correctly, not burning out. Um, and then another one was release more endurance workout. Um, it's rowing, swimming, and running. So that one will just be focusing on controlling my heart rate and not getting, letting it get out of hand and not getting eaten by a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fear that you have? Is that like a real fear or a joke? Well, I just... <laughs> I have never really ocean swam. Yeah. Um, for like working out. We've obviously like, you know, swam in the ocean for fun. But yeah, I'm pretty scared of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like swimming in the ocean either. It's beautiful. Yeah, I wanna it's look at it. Creatures <laughs> that I don't know. Yeah. 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 Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So okay, so best case scenario, you do really good in those those events. Mm-hmm. How many people are competing in your, like, division? Yep, so 20 from 20. all around the world. Wow. wow. And, you qual- and you qualified. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's, that's another reason why it's such a big deal, right? There's only 20 yeah. people. I wonder, how, do you know how many people tried, I don't know, I'm, not, I'm saying this wrong, tried mm-hmm. out? <laughs> yeah, um, a few hundred did. Um, there's a lot of girls. There's some from Mexico, Canada. So they're not just the U S yeah, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say a few hundred tried out. Awesome. So it's your first competition away with travel. It's your first competition internationally. It's only your second competition individually. And it's one of the biggest competitions in CrossFit. (laughs) No, no pressure. Um, Yeah, we're just going to stay calm. And um, (laughs) what comes after Wadapalooza? After Wadapalooza, we're going to focus on the open. So that's another worldwide competition. Um, it's online. So the workouts are released and then, um, you can do them a few times, but there are certain deadlines, um, where your scores need to be submitted. So, um, I'm going to be competing in the open and I will be an elite individual. So now I'll, my birthday is, um, before the CrossFit Games, which is the big deal. So I will be 18, meaning I have to compete with the, the big girls. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, <laughs> oh wow. So, have you you've done the open in the past, right? Yeah, you did I, the, you did, done it for yeah. Other years. Okay, and how'd you finish? This past year, I was in the teen division and I placed twenty something um, after the first round, and then. If you make top per, top ten percent out of everyone, you get to move on to a stage called quarterfinals. So I got to move on there and top twenty went to the games, and I was like thirtieth or thirty first. So I was short of the CrossFit Games, but that'll be my goal in a few years. But not by much, and not by mm-hmm. for some. Just started CrossFit. Because <laughs> right. essentially, yeah. you have That's just started exciting. CrossFit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. What do you see overall in the sport for you? Um, is this is this something you want to continue? Like, where? What is the top? What's the What's the goal? Yeah. So my goal is to be an elite athlete and make it to the top level, which is the CrossFit Games. Um, I think it's very attainable. It's just um, getting there just requires a lot of time and dedication um, and selfishness. It sounds bad, but um, sometimes you have to be a little selfish and prioritize things uh, like sleep or, you know, eating certain things um, just to really fuel your body so you can perform at that level. So competing at the CrossFit Games, yes, would be, is my goal. Okay. And if you, and when you make that goal, because you will, mm-hmm. we, we know you will. Mm-hmm. So when you make that goal, that, then what? Is it going to be doing it again? Is this yeah. going to be something? No? Is that what you yeah. said? No, I said yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I just want to make it and then I'm done. Oh, well, no, I got to just go and see how long my body can, you know, hold up. Obviously, I don't want to just injure myself and not have fun. My goal is just to be, you know, having fun the whole time and not, you know, putting too much pressure on myself um, and helping others along the way as well. And what does helping others along the way look like for you? So I really love everyone at the gym and they're all so supportive. And, you know, it's so exciting to watch other people, you know, get their first skill or, hit a PR and so um, just helping you know the little kids at CrossFit learn how to do certain skills or lift weights correctly is really um, fun for me so that would be another thing I would enjoy along the way. So coaching is in your future yes? Yes. And you are volunteering right now at the gym? Yeah I'm just helping with the kids program. Ah, right, right. Lovely. And you like it? Yeah. So, yeah, you like yeah, other I kind of have to. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I like my own kids. I don't know how I feel about other people's kids. <laughs> yes, these are rough, but. <laughs> so and what kind of support does the community, what are the things that they provide for you or help you with? And, and what does that mean to you? So they're always there, you know, cheering me on. Um, It's so fun to, you know, when I was doing the qualifier workouts, they would all like crowd around and cheer me on. And that's really encouraging um, to know that they're all on my side and want me to do well. And a few of them like travel to my competitions, which is really nice of them as well. Um, And they're always just lifting me up and encouraging me. So yeah, that's always sweet of them. It's a, um, I have a unique insight into the community, um, mm-hmm. even though I don't live there. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I have known Al for many, many yeah. years. Yeah. And we did gymnastics together. And now, obviously, I've done the marketing for CrossFit for quite some time now. So mm-hmm. I can attest to uh, it being a really unique and strong community in ways that other um, businesses and gyms just aren't. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I'm pretty pumped that um, you walked into the gym and that they get to have you and that you get to have them. Uh, It's a super special relationship, I think. And um, Mm -hmm. yeah, so so that's so, so cool. So what about college? What about Mm -hmm. 
you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Are you already grown up? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's been something that I've been thinking about for a really long time. When I was little, I always, you know, wanted to be like a doctor or, you know, some big thing. But um, now looking at it realistically, I would be more on the business side or finance, you know. Um, I really enjoy money and finance. <laughs> so, I enjoy money too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should go like into planning, money. I guess, stuff like that. Um, so I think college is something to consider. Just I don't know right now if it's the best idea to go to college if I'm not 100% and waste that money, and, you know, mm -hmm. I have other goals in front of me. So I'm going to focus on where I really want to go right now. And that is as far as you can get in CrossFit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good. What advice do you um, for your generation, for the people of your age, no matter what they're doing in their life, just general advice. Yeah. So some advice, some things that I've learned, I've learned, um, um, to be very dedicated in whatever you do and like, sounds so cringy, but like, don't give up, but it's true. Like I was really frustrated with CrossFit when I wasn't able to lift as heavy as um, like Al and Lexi because I really look up to them um, but I just kept working on it and I was consistent and I set goals and just really being able to identify what your goals are and then set a plan on how you're going to reach those have, have really helped me so I would recommend you know setting goals knowing where you want to go and just executing so just being consistent and dedicated. That's pretty good advice. And I think that that can translate into all areas of life. Seems, seems legit. Seems so. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So final days of preparation for Wadapalooza. What's like, what's a typical day look like for you? Outline it for me. Okay. So I wake up in the morning around 530 and get ready to go down to the gym. There's a six o'clock class. So I attend that every mor most mornings. And I do the workout with the class and the strength. And then um, I usually stay after for another hour or so and do the extra strength or some accessories. And then right now I'm only taking three classes at school. So I get done about 145, which um, allows me to go back into the gym before I have to nanny or work um, to do another session, which um, sometimes I do more cardio or gymnastics work or skill work. And some days I focus more on strength. Um, I just really listen to my body and see how I'm feeling that day. Rest if I need to rest. But yeah, that's what a normal day usually looks like. And what time do you hit the... <laughs> Um, so I should be going to bed earlier than I do. It depends <laughs> on my work schedule. So at Olson's, I usually, um, get done there around nine o'clock and then I eat dinner and go to bed like nine thirty. Um, so typically I try to get to bed around nine, nine thirty. Sometimes it's 10. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a long day for sure. And mentally, yeah. How do you switch? Is it easy for you to just mentally make the switch? Like, okay, I'm at CrossFit. Okay, now I'm at school. Okay, now I'm back at, you know, now I'm at work. Now I'm at CrossFit. Now I'm at school. Yeah. Is, it, is that exhausting or is it easy for you to just kind of switch up the task and focus on what needs to get done in the moment? Yeah, I would say it's challenging if I think about it too much. So if my parents are like, you're working too much. You have this much to do. Then I'm like, stop, you're stressing me out. But then, like, I know where I need to be and I know what I need to do. So I just do it. Like, I kind of just shut my brain off and go. So it's not really difficult to make transitions unless I'm, like, super tired. So rapid fire question. What's your favorite CrossFit movement? My favorite CrossFit, move CrossFit movement is... Handstand walks. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite sports ones you've done? Like, what do you like to watch a certain sport? Oh. Or yeah, I really like to watch downhill skiing. 
Okay. Like, Olympics, that's really fun to watch. Awesome. I love the Olympics. Oh, my gosh. Um, do you read? Yes. I did not used to enjoy reading, but now I found books that have really taught me a lot, so I've become um, a better reader. <laughs> what's, what's one of those books? Um, I've read a few CrossFit books, so one about Tia and um, – Rich Froning, and then I, I'm reading a book right now about mental discipline and mental toughness, kind of. And I'm actually reading a good series in school. It's called I Am the Weapon. So those are pretty interesting books. Very cool. Well. And what about music? Artist? Um, music. I'm kind of just listen to whatever. I'm more of I like rap when I'm working out. Um, so I don't really have a favorite artist. I guess I kind of like Trippy Red. <laughs> city girl or country girl? City. City? Really? Well, I don't know. I guess I grew up in the country, so yeah. I, There's I don't an know. appeal. Yeah. There's a draw to the city because it's not what you're, yeah. you know, exposed to daily. I can yeah. get that. I grew up where you grew up and moved away. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would be more of a country girl. <laughs> <laughs> and favorite food favorite junk food oh yes my favorite junk food is definitely any sweet candy really oh that's i thought for sure you were gonna say pizza but all right <laughs> that's fine it's my stomach too much anything else that you want to share with somebody who might be listening we want it we want to tell people where they can follow you now that you have yeah. instagram right now that you have social mm -hmm. media where can they find you yeah, they can find me on Instagram, and my username is fish underscore Lydia, I believe. So, um, yes, it is. <laughs> follow me um, and just see, you know, what I do every day or what I'm up to. Um, I'll be posting more stuff along the lines of my journey um, or, like, what I eat. Sometimes I'll post about that. Um Otherwise, yeah. Instagram, they can follow you. We want to try yeah. and get you on some more podcasts. If anybody's listening who wants to support Lydia in her journey, maybe through a sponsorship or something else like that, you can actually reach out to her coach, Allison at CrossFitChippewa.com. I can put all of that in the episode notes. I just want to say, like, a a best of luck to you. Uh, you're you. going to do fantastic. I know everybody is excited for you um, and everybody wants to support you. And so, um, yeah, it's not selfish, right? Like this is, this is what you're doing. It sounds yeah. you have a great head on your shoulders. Um, you. You, you know, you don't talk to a lot of people who we are 17. And everyone around me. Yeah, that's great. You know, that's really important. And it's great that you recognize that. Um, and yeah, I think it's just, I, I love your story. I hope that you get a chance to share your story with more people. Because I think that it's really inspirational. And I think you can teach um, girls your age a lot, especially like when you're talking about that social media piece, because it is a big part of a lot of people's lives and it's a big part of a lot of people's heartache. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to be a positive role model, especially in this right now. Um, so, yeah. So, well, congratulations on your success so far. We're going to be watching, waiting, cheering. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time.